All right, welcome back to another year in review. It's my second year of YouTube this year, and we got into quite a few fish again this year, and I'm gonna break it down to a few key species. Basically some stuff I haven't done before, chasing those bigger snapper, uh, barramundi and stuff like that. Some, some new stuff to me, which I really enjoyed and, and learned a fair bit from. I'll go into a bit deeper detail in this video than I would on the water. Go through a little bit more the process of finding the fish and also how I target the fish as well. So I'll start the video off by going through some of the snapper I targeted out in the middle of Morton Bay, um, namely Harry Atkinson's artificial reef for the most part. I did catch some other fish around Peel Island and a few other places like that, but the bigger fish came from the middle of the bay there in Harry Atkinson's artificial reef. So I would go out in the attack and I'd basically look at some of the larger structures in Morton Bay there around that reef and look on the up current side, generally speaking. So if you've got a, a structure in the water like this, you'd have the current coming onto the structure. They'll be sitting in front of that structure. So what happens with the water hits, hits the structure and creates like a whirly effect, basically a swirling. So the snapper will use that swirling effect to their advantage. They'll sit on the bottom and any bait that gets sucked down from that whirling effect, they'll sit there on that, on that level there and eat those bait fish as they get sucked back down. So they use that structure and current to their advantage to for it to bring them food to them basically they don't have to hunt so much themselves and move around too much it gets drawn down to them and they feed off it like that so that's kind of the areas i was looking there's some smaller structures as well where there's a bit of ground and the, the snapper was sitting on there as well but for the most part i was fishing around larger structures that that hold um you know a lot of current uh swirling effects basically from that current so Around those larger structures, it can be quite difficult because you've got, you know, a big sharp structure on the bottom and you've got fish that are on the upcurrent side. So once you hook those fish, it's very easy for them to swim with the current back into those structures and bust you off, which uh, some of those videos had some pretty epic bust offs as well as some epic fish landed. So that and, that and the sharks you've got to contend with as well. Luckily, I only think I lost one fish to the sharks in that season, so it wasn't too bad but it is another factor you've got to play into it. And the other problem you've got with snapper is you need to use pretty light line, generally speaking, to get the hook up. So I was using a small bait cast combo. It's because I prefer bait cast over spin. So I run a, a small Shimano reel there and I'm running some PE2 line, which is generally from say 24 to, to 30 pound breaking strain. And leader wise from 16 was the lowest I went down to and up to about 25. So. I'd fish that heavier leader first. If I couldn't get a bite, I'd drop down uh, to a lighter leader and try that. Now that's a Medusa Edge um, NS rod, six foot nine, eight to 14 pounds, so quite a light rod, but I'm only using fairly light jig heads from one six to three eight. So quite light jig heads and quite a, an erratic retrieve. Although a lot of fish do take the lure on the drop, it's a matter of setting up your drift or if you're going to spot lock up in front of the structure, which I quite often did, casting well ahead of the boat and allowing that slack line for that that lure to fall because we're talking depths of sort of 15 to 20 meters deep so you need a fairly long distance for that lure from where it lands to where you want it to land on the bottom where the fish are where you're targeting so you need that distance sometimes i drive up a bit cast and then drift back a little bit with that lure as well and that's probably the better way to do it the problem being is it's high current you're going to go back over the structure very very quickly so if you can get that scenario where those fish are pretty much stationary in the bottom, sitting above them, casting up and bringing that lure back is probably an easier uh, presentation to get multiple shots at that same school of fish. Now the lure of choice this year was a uh, four inch Molex fork flex. So a couple of colors did the damage for me, but this one here, the acid pink, was particularly a um, successful color. Quite a bright lure and I run again, run that on a like a one quarter through to a three-eighth jig head so now different brands of jig heads I use TT's uh, BKK uh, you've got your dial jig heads which have just come out which are really good to hold on to those stretchy material plastics they've got really really good keepers to hold them on but just an example just to show you that the power of the jaw strength of a snapper this is a uh, was a brand new hook before I uh, fished it and um, that gives you a little example of the jaw pressure strength that these fish have. They can just bend a hook on itself quite easily. So this is the, um, the lures in the packet. So that's the Molex 4 Flex 4 inch. I use the 5 inch a lot for jew fish and stuff like that. The 4 inch giant herring, that sort of thing. Snapper, both the big ones and the smaller ones around the shallows as well. 
So that's sort of basically the, the technique I was going up, finding those fish, drifting back, bringing those lures down, as light a jig head as possible, uh, hooking those fish, and then when I hook up, basically I'm, I'm hitting the electric and trying to drive as far forward as I can against the current, which is a bit tricky, and trying to pull that fish against the current as well to pull it away from the structure. So at the start, I was having some pretty good success, and towards the end there, I was having not so much. I think the fish may have changed from snapper to fish like tusk fish or something like that. It's hard to sort of tell. But yeah, so there's some colossal wins and some colossal losses there, but all in all, great fun. And a fair bit of stuff learned by fishing for those fish in that deeper water, something I haven't really done before. All right, let's have a little bit of a look at this action now, and then we'll get back to the next species. You do that. All right, the other thing I did this year was um, target at Mondrian Dam Barra for the first time. I haven't done much impoundment fishing in the past, and um, to go out there this year and get my head around it was a really good feeling. Caught, a, caught a, quite a few fish, some really good ones, and I uh, learned a lot along the way, which is really good. I'll break it down into sort of a couple of things that I looked, basically would be the following the wind uh, direction that we've had prevailing in those few days before. So. If it's running from the, the northeast, I'd uh, follow where that wind blew into and target areas where that wind was going to. The same with the southeast, you'd have a bit of a different area. The first couple of trips were predominantly southeasterly winds, so we fished um, around Bird Bay and Wiggle Bay and that sort of thing. And as the uh, wind changed a bit more northeasterly, I started heading up to Bee Bay and places like that, trying fishing in there. So following that wind's pretty pretty key. That time of year, the, the water temperature's quite low, so. We're fishing quite shallow. The the barra trying to find that you know warmer water, trying to find that 23, 24. It progressed as it got warmer. The the water got warmer, but the start was sort of 23, 24. Uh, moved into that 26, 27. So the fish would go right up into the shallows basically to find that warmer water where the wind was blowing it into, and where it was shallow and had more time during the day to warm up. So. 
those are the kind of areas they're looking for shallow bays with uh, lay downs structure and stuff like that whether it be weed beds or lay downs or something like that and then your points as well where it went from deeper water and come up to a sharp point and might be some sticks or a bit of weed on there they'd come up and down off that point basically to feed so targeting those shallow areas so casting your lure in quite shallow and then bringing it out so I'll break it down to two basic sort of outfits and two basic sort of lures that I used. Um, the first one was to get a new rod for me this year was a Dobbins Champion uh, swim bait rod. So it's a 795, it's a 7 foot 9 rod, it's 15 to 30 pounds, quite a long rod with quite a long butt and it's really good to, to get leverage to cast those big lures because basically my favourite combo lure this year was the 7 inch Molex RT shirt. So quite a big lure. Now running sort of a half ounce, three quarter, up to an ounce jig head and a, and a treble hanging off the front there. So quite a heavy uh, presentation there and that's why you need quite a heavy rod to cast that lure with. So because it's a sinking lure, I'm happy to use fluorocarbon because that leader material sinks as it's got time in the water, whereas your nylon is a floating and I'll talk about that in a second with the, the hard bodies. Now the, uh, the reel is a Abu Rigo Beast. Now I'm running P3. Uh, in the new Sunline AMZ rope, which is a 35 pound, and I'm running a 60 pound, 60 pound fluorocarbon leader. That's a System Shock fluorocarbon, so it's quite a hard wearing fluorocarbon, but still got a bit of stretch in it. You've got a fish that jumps and has a tendency to throw lures quite easily. It's good to have a leader material with a bit of stretch in it. I'll happily say I didn't lose any fish whatsoever to getting chafed off, uh, either on the System Shock fluorocarbon or the System Shock nylon. That may have just been good luck, who knows, but um, I didn't lose any fish at all due to um, getting rubbed off and I only lost probably two or three fish that threw the lure while I was jumping. So pretty good, pretty good success rate in terms of uh, landing fish with my leader materials that I used. So, so that heavier, heavier outfit to cast those heavier lures, uh, the retrieve basically is to throw that lure in. Obviously, it's quite shallow. You want to have your rod tip up and start to engage your wine straight away. And as that lure comes out further, you can either bring your rod down or slow your retrieve down, depending on the depth variation. If that if that depth isn't is quite flat for a long distance, you can probably keep that speed quite quite consistent. And if it drops off a fair bit, then you might want to slow that speed up. But having said that, the fish will generally come up to take that lure anyway. So having that lure track a metre to maybe a metre and a half under the water is plenty a lot of times. So you don't um, need to let it sink to the bottom. As a mistake I was making quite a lot at the start was to cast out, let the lure sink, start retrieving, let it sink again, and you're just gonna get snagged up a lot doing that. Cast that lure out, be confident that it's gonna track at the right depth and just constantly wind that in. You can mix it up with some hops and vary retrieve speed and stuff like that till you find a bit of a, a rhythm or you might be getting a bit of a Sort of a, something that seems to be working so you can stick on that hone on that but um, generally just speaking it's a cast out of slow wine basically there's no no special tricks or techniques to, to throwing in a plastic and winding it in that and that goes through Molex 140 shads and 120s that I used as well but for the most part for this bigger outfit I use those 7 inch RT shads now the other combo was for throwing these little lucky craft pointers so this little fella here the, uh, the 206 colour uh, and lucky craft pointer was a winner for me. It's uh, quite a natural color, very garfish sort of colored. And uh, I was running some fairly light trebles on them, like a, a, a two or three by strong treble. So most part was a three by strong. Some uh, DT68S trebles. So not overly heavy, but better hook penetration. And to throw those little lures, you need a bit of a lighter rod. So this is only a six to 12 pound, believe it or not, but she bats probably a little bit higher than six to 12. It's a Dobbins Champion Extreme 702C and uh, I'm running a Bantam um, 150 on that with some PE2 and the AMZ braid again. But stepping up the leader uh, in nylon to a heavier poundage. So around 80, 90 and 100 pound in the nylon. So the nylon leader basically is uh, designed to help keep that lure up. So you'll, you'll bring that lure down as you retrieve it and that nylon leader will have a tendency to come back up, float stops it from sinking. So if you have a fluorocarbon leader and starts to sink down, it's gonna have a general tendency to bring your lure down. So most of these lures are at best suspending, if not slow sinking. So you want that lure, that line to be helping hold that lure up rather than pro progressing its sink. So nylon leader, again, a little bit even more stretchy than the fluorocarbon version. 
So a lot of stretch. So again, if that fish jumps, throw the lure in its mouth, less likely to pull the hooks. So that's, but you go a bit heavier because it's not as abrasion resistant as fluorocarbon. This is a softer material, easier for the fish to rub through. Generally a little bit thinner in diameter as well. So that's why I'm running um, 80, 90, and 100 pound. And again, I didn't lose any fish to getting rubbed off, but I would always back off once I had the fish hooked well and truly. I'd back the drag off, um, reducing the amount of pressure that the fish had to rub on it, so it would less likely to rub through the, the leader material. Now, the way to work these lures is basically to wind them down, get them down to the required depth, which may be that meter mark or so, and it's just a matter of, of working your lure, twitching it, um, you know, slow wind to a pause. Long pauses were pretty, pretty critical in some instances to get bites. Biggest fish I caught for the whole time I was there was a meter 10, and that was caught on a super long pause, probably a good 10, 15 second pause. So worth mixing it up a lot more than what you would with your plastics. You really try and play this hard body uh, retrieval to entice a bite. So something, something worth trying and playing with. Definitely a deadly technique and probably the most fun bite you're gonna get out of these barrows to get them to crunch a hard body and pull some string. All right, so I've got a bit of footage now from Mondrian Barra, and uh, let's have a look at that now. This year I was also lucky enough to be invited on what I call the fishing trip of a lifetime and that is to go on a 36 footer uh, north of Yapoon for six days with the boys from Barra Jacks. Jeff and James invited me out for the trip and I'd not long bought my Oshu Jigger F Custom off those guys and was able to give it a good run on some beautiful big nanny guy that were catching off a uh, rock just out from um, the area we're staying north of Yapoon. So, that was the day, first day we were out there uh, jigging, catching a ton of fish. And how good are those, those reef fish to eat? Those nanny guys and cold trout were just awesome to eat. So this, uh, this combo has basically got a P3. It's a ULT four strand jigging braid. Um, Sammy Hitsky put me on this braid actually. Uh, he uses it for, for some of his deep jigging. 
and it is a very very low stretch braid so it's going to be very direct with your lure when you get down that deeper water we weren't fishing overly deep it's sort of 30 40 meters um, I was using that free fall lever that you get on this F Custom to slow the descent of the, um, well, more so keep the tension on the line to keep the lure straight rather than letting it get outside too much, which will slow it sink. So if you've got a bit of tension on that lure as it's falling, it's gonna, it's gonna sink straight down better. Whereas if you've got too much slack, it's gonna be doing these ones. So it's a slower sink if you've got less pressure, which kind of doesn't make sense, but it does at the same time. Um, let's that lure get down quicker. So that free fall lever, that's what it's designed for. And gave this, this reel a really good workout. Some really big nanny guys. I think we got them up over 80 centimeters. Uh, so P3 in the four strand low stretch braid and I'm running like a 60 or an 80 pound nylon system shock leader. So giving some stretch, only a small portion of stretch over that short bit of leader, but they're very direct uh, low stretch braid. Uh, quite coarse, quite noisy through the guides, but um, Really, really strong and, and really nice braid to use for that jigging stuff. So that was that was day one, and then we spent the next sort of five days fishing in more sheltered waters because we had a bit more um, wind for the next few days. The next morning, we went out to some of the local islands down there, and we fished a combination of your larger fork flex plastics, um, as well as these uh, little 3.5 inch biwa grubs. I'll show you them in a, in a minute. These have uh, been quite well for me locally, as well as um, up there, they're popping these around the islands there, catching uh, cold trout and all sorts of stuff, some some uh, sweet lip and all that sort of stuff. Really, really good fishing around the islands. And then we brought it back into the estuary systems as well and um, did a little bit with the bigger prawns, slow rolling these prawns over some rock bars and stuff like that. I got myself a nice barra out of there, nice saltwater barra, and a heap of grunt, a heap of finger mark. Um, just so many fish in some of these areas was crazy. You know, did a little bit of jerk baiting with the hard bodies for um, your blue salmon and stuff like that. So we, we really were able to throw so many different lures and catch so many different species on this trip. It wasn't funny. We finished the last couple of days uh, fishing the rocky headlands at the mouth of the area. And again, using uh, fork flexes and plastics like that. Uh, on that medium to heavy sort of gear, um, hooking black dew. Unfortunately, the sharks like to eat dew pretty much everywhere and certainly no exception uh, up at um, up at these areas too. So we had black dew versus mulloway, which I'm so used to catching. And I must say the black dew uh, would definitely pull a, a mulloway backwards in my opinion. They really, really do fight very hard. I mean, these were big fish in that sort of 110 to 20, 120 category and there was sharks around, but um, I must admit in, in that sort of three to six meters, you can really tell that the black dew is a far more powerful fish than a, than a mulloway. So hate to uh, knock on the mulloway, but the black dew is, a, is, in my opinion, a much harder fighting fish. Um, not, so, not so nice when you get in, it's a bit smelly. Uh, doesn't smell quite as nice as a southern mulloway, the old black dew, but um, what a great fighting fish. And unfortunately the sharks played a, a bad hand in that game and um, they ate uh, a few fish. We didn't sacrifice too many, but we finally got one in and that was a great feeling to finally bang one of those big black chew, um, big, big, uh, big broad bar mackerel and all sorts of stuff. It was a really great trip. Um, hopefully get out there once again in the future, we'll see. All right, I'll show you the action from that great trip that we did uh, earlier in the year, in August, I think it was. Um, so check this out, it's pretty cool.
Throughout the year, I basically did my normal sort of stuff as well, targeting jewfish, targeting threadfin, chasing those smaller snapper on the on the flats. Probably a little bit more this year than I did in the previous years. But um, sharks are becoming a bit of a problem at the moment. We've got um, you know the warmer months here now, and the sharks are pretty ripe. I did get in the pin during the winter, in the late part of winter, but I really struggled with the jewfish this year. They seem to always have one or two sharks hanging around, which seem to put them off or they just weren't biting as good as previous years. I'm not too sure what that was, but uh, the fishing was definitely a lot, a lot tougher for jewfish in the pin than previous years. Morton Bay, the fishing's quite good, but uh, the, the sharks, again, are a massive issue. So I've kind of stepped it up with my gear. I'm running pretty much a minimum P3 if I'm fishing for a Jew now. And I run that on a, like a 40 pound minimum leader, um, you know, a five inch or even up to a six inch four flex. I've even incorporated using the swim bait rod at times to, to target these jewfish. So I'm, I'm fishing a one ounce jig head with a, with a 6.0 fork flex with the P3 and 60 pound leader, which might seem quite heavy, but it's required. When there's sharks around, you need to get those jewfish in as quickly as you can. Otherwise, you're just going to feed them to the sharks. If I get that fish in, there's no sharks in the sander, I can obviously make a decision whether I want to keep it or release it. But uh, sometimes you pull them in too quick, barotrauma is an issue, you're better off keeping that one or two fish for a feed and then moving on doing something else. So be very mindful when you're targeting jewfish in the bay, especially this time of year when the sharks are pretty bad. The other thing I did a fair bit of again was um, targeting threadfin. And uh, this year I probably used soft plastics a lot more than I have in previous years. So whether that be a little paddle tail soft plastic like a little Molex RT shad, and I run that on sort of a, anywhere from a 3 8 to a half ounce head, just with small little hops along the bottom. Trying to back it off a little bit in the leader material, probably coming back to like a 30 pound leader. And again, your PE2 or 2.5 braids usually fine. Running them on like an 8 to 14 or a 10 to, 10 to 20 pounds uh, bait cast rod or spin rod. A uh, new lure for the year was this Biwa 3.5 inch curly tail grub. So I really gave these a bit of a crack this year, and they're a stretchy material plastic, uh, three and a half inch grub, nice and easy to rig. Proving quite successful in the bay on a number of species, but generally um, snapper have been the main target, and sweet lip and that sort of thing so far. They've been fishing quite well. All right, so that's this uh, little year's wrap up. Um, yeah, like I said, throw in the comments section if there's anything, any questions you've got to ask me about sort of species and techniques, and um, if there's anything you want me to do in the, next, in the new year, just put it into the comments section and we can see what we can do. All right, until uh, next week, catch you later, guys.